listen, we're going to continue our series uh, called Go Get Your Life Back. And this message is called Try It Again. It's basically about how David desired to bring the presence of God into the city of David. But it came with a cost, but it was worth it. Check this message out. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going out, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Now I'm gonna and now I'm gonna go to the throne of grace right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank this morning, God. You're a wonder in our souls, God. For there is no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Hallelujah in our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. Hallelujah. We couldn't have made it this far without you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah.
take out anything that's not like you. God, we pray that you get the glory in our lives, oh God. That the good that they see in us, oh God, that we, we redirect that attention right back to you, oh God. Use us.
proclamation together. Here we go. This is my Bible. I believe it is the written and fallible word of God. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I can have what the Bible says I can have. I am who the Bible says that I am. After today, I will never be the same. Today, I will be changed. We're coming out of 2 Samuel 6, chapter, the 11th through the 14th verse. Then you can step down. Amen. And it reads as such. Keep playing, Dr. Yes. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatness, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. I want to continue in our series, Go Get Your Life Back. And I want you to touch yourself, literally lay hands on yourself and say, try it again. Say, try it again. Amen. Amen. Try it again. Amen. Try it again. You may be seated. If you're at home, you may relax. This is a defining moment for somebody and I'm excited for the opportunity to be able to share with you in this moment. You have been extraordinarily frustrated in your life. The challenges have been overwhelming. And so I'm going to take my time. I'm going to preach it like an old Methodist preacher today. I might end and rub my stomach a few times, but I need to make sure you get this word of God. Try it again. In our recollection of history, here is David having the desire to bring the ark from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. And this is significant, and let me show you why. The ark of the testimony also called the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of God, was among hundreds of other descriptive instruments or instructions that God gave to the man of God for building the tabernacle. God wanted a place to meet the high priest. Therefore, God gave instructions on the construction of the Ark. The beauty of the Ark showed honor, divinity, and royalty and supreme rulership that God had chosen over his people. When you look at Exodus 25, 10 through 22, they use a seal wood, which is a gnarly, thorny tree. Just to handle the wood can, can give you these prickers in your fingers. And, and the wood itself, the extract, or the extract that came out of the wood was worth a lot of money. It was even a way of comrades. And so Lord said, take this wood, this wood that is hard to work with, and make me an ark and make it three and three quarters feet long, okay. two and a quarter feet wide, and two and a quarter feet high. Yeah, yeah. And what I want you to do is I want you to put four rings of gold on the outside, two on the one side and two on the other side, and then I want you to overlay poles and cover them with gold. Yes, yes. The poles were never to be removed. The ark in itself was overlaid inside and outside with pure gold yes, yes. and with molten gold all around it. The lid of the mercy seat was pure gold yes. with angels on opposite ends whose wings overstretched the mercy seat. 
And this is significant because the mercy seat is where God met the priest once a year for him to do the yearly sacrifice to cover God's people and himself for the sins that they had committed. Inside of the ark, stay with me on this because I'm going somewhere with this. Inside of the ark were three elements that had both prophetic and symbolic meanings. The first thing that was in the ark was the tablet of stones that had the Ten Commandments engraved on them. And the significance of the Ten Commandments was to show the children of Israel they will never be capable to reaching ultimate unity with God without a perfect sacrifice. Uh, the, the law was so perfect I felt short of the law. And whenever you see the law, it should have you thank God. Because without Jesus, the law would never have been fulfilled. The second thing that was in the ark was a pot of manna, which was representative during the time that Israel was in the wilderness. And it was symbolic to remind them that God's love and his peace and his provision will always be with them. The third thing that was in the ark was the budded rod of Aaron. And, and, and it symbolized God's miraculous power, his infinite leadership, and his anointed priestlyhood for those that he has chosen to walk with him. How many of you know you're chosen by God to walk with him? Somebody type and say, I'm chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. So the Ark of the Testimony was a constant reminder that God desired to dwell with his people. The Ark was a constant reminder that God desired to manifest to his people. The Ark was a constant reminder that God wanted his power to be on and in and over his people. And in return, the Ark was a tangible way that allowed the people of God to honor God. And whenever the Ark was honored and wherever it went, God would show up for his people. Now, today, the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of God, whenever you identify it, it typifies the presence of God. The Ark is symbolic for the literal manifestation of God's presence in your life and the access we have to God because of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to be clear that you cannot have God's presence without Jesus. You got to have Jesus to get to God. Now, I understand that there's teachings that have you going directly to God, but without Jesus, there is no access because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I just want to be clear that you need Jesus Christ. And since God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the same power that flowed through Jesus, the same power that flowed through the ark will flow through your life. The Bible says in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you power, the tread of the serpent and the scorpion over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. It is designed, listen, I want to say this and make it clear, whoever this message is for today, but it is designed time for the people of God to overcome. Let me say it again. It is designed for the people of God to overcome. But just like with Israel, we overcome when we honor God. Listen, if Israel honored God, then what and what God represented was honor. God's presence showed up and all of Israel's enemies were defeated. If there was communion between God and Israel, everywhere that Israel tread their feet became Israel's possession. Even today, if we would honor God, winning will be a lifestyle. Winning will be how we live. And whenever we face defeat, it's the preparation in our character to handle the next level of victories in our lives. Somebody touch yourself and say, I am victorious. I am victorious. 
outright victorious. Listen, you have to understand, as long as you are a child of God, as long as you are honoring God's presence, do not get used to losing. Don't get used to walking in a life of defeat. Don't get used to depression. Don't get used to fear. Don't get used to being lonely. Don't get used to borrowing. Because as long as you're a child of God, God said you are more than a conqueror. Don't get used to feeling down because it's temporary. Listen, don't get used to being broke because being broke is temporary. Don't get used to seeing me down because it's only temporary. Touch yourself in time. It's temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Listen, I want to be clear. I, I, I have to tell somebody that you have allowed COVID-19 and the, the racial tension in the world dictate a message that God hasn't said about you. God said you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're first and not last. You tread a meal and not down here. So what you're going through is temporary. It's temporary. Don't make this your way of life. Because it's temporary. Sorrow is not a way of life for believers. It's temporary. Sickness is not a way of life for believers. And if it is there, your grace, the grace on your life, God will help you get through it victoriously. Don't get used to losing. Don't, oh, I feel that. Don't get used to losing. Don't expect, have you ever went through some hard times in your life and you just get used to losing? Something good happens, and but you expect the good thing to pass and the bad things to start happening. But the devil is a liar. And so there are three scriptural illustrations of God showing up for his people. And I want to be clear, if you're taking notes, please write this down because this is going to speak to you about God's presence. Understand, whenever the ark was honored, there would be a demonstration of God's power, revelation of God's will, and devastation of the enemies of Israel. There would be demonstration of God's power, revelation of God's will, and devastation of the enemies of Israel. If you apply the symbolic arc to mean God's presence in your life, whenever God is honored in your life, whenever God is, 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 is received in your life, there will be demonstration of God's power in your life. There will be revelation of God's will for your life and devastation for your enemies through your life. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me say that again. I want to be sure we have that. When you honor the presence of God, there will be a demonstration of God's power in your life. In other words, you will bind the devil and he will flee. In other words, you will lay hands on yourself and say, recover, and you shall recover. See, we don't teach that anymore. When we get headaches, we grab the eccentric. But I'm the first one to lay hands on myself and tell the devil, I do not receive that. So when you're honoring God, you'll see the demonstration. You'll get revelation for the will of God for your life and the devastation of your enemies through your life. Let me show you this in your word. Go to Joshua 3, 15 and 16. It says, when the ark was honored, God demonstrated that he was able to make a way out of no way. Listen, as they bear the ark, were come unto Jordan. And the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. And they didn't even have to get all the way in. Their feet just touched trouble. The waters which came down from above stood and rose upon 
and he very far from the city of Adam, that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. In other words, God demonstrated his power by making a way out of nowhere. Hear me closely. When you are moving into the next dimension, God wants to demonstrate to you that there is no obstacle that has the power, whatever you are in God, whatever you may be dealing with, to stop you when you've got God's presence. Yes. Nah. If you have enough courage to step out in trouble with God, mm -hmm. he has enough power to demonstrate that he's a miracle worker and give you the triumph over your troubles. Number two, when the ark is honored, he'll give you revelation. This part got me right here. Mm -hmm. Numbers 10, 33 and 36. Listen to what it says. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey the, to search out a resting place for them. Ah. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered. And let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Listen, when you're moving by revelation, you are moving in the preordained, predestined, preselected path that God has set for you. Therefore, there is no devil in hell that you will ever meet in the preselected path that you cannot overcome with God's presence. He's already ordered your steps. Did you see that? Whenever, watch this, according to the word of God, whenever God goes before you, he's looking for places to bless you. Y'all didn't get that. Whenever God's before you, he is planning on making miracles. He's planning on making your enemies scatter. And when God rests upon you, it is always to multiply you. That's why I said don't get used to losing. Uh, because if you feel like you're by yourself, uh, God is with you. But he's working out something in your future. And when God is resting on you, he's going to multiply you and give you more. Touch yourself and say more. More. I want to show you this. When the ark is honored, God will devastate your enemies. Go to Joshua 6, 4, and 5. I want you to see this. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day he shall come into the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Listen, when you move in obedience to God, and then you accompany your obedience with praise. Every single enemy in your life will be devastated by their own weapon. Uh, and I want to be clear. So watch this. We're going somewhere. you got to stay with me. We're taking a long ride home to Mama's house. Listen, the only time the ark was ever ineffective was where there was no fellowship between God and Israel. Listen, because of the blatant disregard for the ark, the ark was stolen by the Philistines. Yeah. The enemies of Israel, watch this, spiritually, the Philistines were able to steal the ark because Israel wanted God's demonstration. They wanted God's revelations. They wanted the devastation of their enemies without giving God consecration. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> so many people 
people want to flow and walk in the power of God, but you're not willing to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. Despite what people believe and despite what's being preached, God still requires a holy lifestyle. I know holiness is not popular. And I know living righteously is not popular. I know living in integrity is not popular. But when you live in integrity, God will always honor you. Psalms 15 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hills? He that worketh righteousness and walketh uprightly, speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor to reproach against his neighbor. And it goes on and on and says, these are the people who were dwelling in God's presence. Israel wanted God's power, but they did not want to live a lifestyle that was conducive for keeping the power of God over their lives. <sighs> Help me, Holy Ghost. They wanted God's power, but not God's providence. They wanted Inside, but not the intimacy of having a relationship with God. Therefore, the Philistines were able to take the ark. However, this is what I love about God. As long as the Philistines had the ark, God wreaked havoc on them. The Philistines, they celebrated. You know, you got to read the story. I'm not going to go into too much in detail because we don't have a whole lot of time. But to read this story, Israel was losing in battle. They said, let's get the Ark of the Lord. And they grabbed the Ark and the roar went through the camp. And the Philistines got nervous because they recognized whenever that Ark was out, they were going to lose. But this time was different because there was no honoring God's spirit and there was no honoring God's presence. So where they would usually win, the Philistines won and took the Ark. And so what happened was, after the Philistines took the ark, they put the ark of God in their God's temple called Dagon. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They put it in there and they were celebrating. Not only did we defeat Israel, but we took their ark, we got their God, we're going to put it in with our God. Mm -hmm. The next morning they get up. David is laying face forward, his arms and his legs is cut off. Because what they didn't realize was inside the ark was the commandments of God that said, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Ah, no other God before me. Ah, but they didn't realize this. And so, and so, look, 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 look. And so, for seven months, they was trying to get rid of the ark. <laughs> Listen, the minute the ark showed up into the city, plagues started happening, boils started happening, people started dying. They were like, no, 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 brother, you better take that down the road. It got so bad, they called all the Philistine lords together and said, what are we going to do with this ark? <laughs> And so what, I don't stop my mind, God. Can you imagine God moving in our lives like that? When we have the presence of God in our ministry, when they talk against the ministry, of God brings heaven from the life of God. And so what they did was, they put it on the cart, made gold representation of the boils and the emeralds and everything else they was dealing with, and they sent it to Israel. But this is the interesting spot. Once it arrived to Israel, it was abandoned for 20 years and came Jathrah. Now this is the presence of God, the representation. God would come down and meet with the people of God. And for 20 years, it was abandoned. There was no miracles with the ark for 20 years. For 20 years, you know, 20 years as an entire generation. If you come back in this church 20 years, 
years from now, some of us will be a little taller. Some of us will be a little wider. Some of us will be a little richer. Some of us, well, praise the Lord, you know. 20 years, watch this. For 20 years, there was no miracles. For 20 years, there was no global demonstration of the move of God. For 20 years, there was no revelation corporately where to move, though they had prophets. Because it's different when you have a prophet and when you got God's presence. Yes. Give me God over a prophet. Yes. 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 Ah, give me his presence. Listen, for 20 years, their enemies were allowed to live amongst them. And this is the tough part. God was right there, a city away, waiting to be honored. He wanted to bless them, but David realized what was happening. Therefore, David wanted to bring the presence of God back into the forefront of Israel's existence. Stay with me. This is a prophetic word. We have not seen God move mightily for generations. And it is because we are not asking God for his presence. We're asking for things and not his presence. We're asking for church growth and not his presence. We're asking for new homes, but not his presence. We're asking for security, but not his presence. But God is going to use COVID-19 to create a move of God in this land. I declare to you that revival is coming. God is, has a group of people that is telling God, I want to have a deeper walk with you, a greater manifestation of his glory. We have already been seeing financial miracles in our ministry. We've already been seeing miraculous healings. Uh, but we're going to a place where God's presence is going to manifest in our lives. Listen, David realized there was something missing from his life uh, and that lives of the people that David was leading. Watch this. I want to be clear. David was anointed king. Somebody type and say anointed. He was anointed. David was called out. David was set apart for a purpose. Listen to me. Hear me clearly. David was so anointed that when he played the heart, demons would leave Saul. David was so anointed that he dropped Goliath with a rag and a rock. David was so anointed that he killed 200 Philistines just for the hand of King Saul's daughter. But David knew there was another level that he had to experience God in his life. David knew that being anointed was just one level the manifestation of the glory of God in our lives. There's people right here in this ministry, there's people watching us who have been uneasy. It's an uneasiness because you know God wants to give you more. He's waking you up in the morning. He's invading your lunches. He's walking in your dreams. He's showing you your future. He's telling you that I have more for you. Can anybody testify about that? Have you just got up a fast and you just feel God rushing in your room? Have you ever been sleeping? Feel God's presence? That's God saying, I want to give you more. David knew, listen to me, though David was anointed, David knew that he was operating on this level, but God had him to go to this level. The issue is, oftentimes when we are anointed, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. The issue is, oftentimes when we are anointed, we let the anointing move in our lives as we should. We let God be glorified as we should. But we get a validation and affirmation of who we are because of the anointing. Let me go deeper than that. So we get a place of pride when God anoints us. When all that surrounding, the anointing should not be a thing of pride, but the anointing is a thing of, of surrenderance. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh. But David knew there was more to life than being anointed. He wanted God's presence. Do you know that kind of presence in 2 Chronicles? The kind of presence that says, 
and 5 and 14, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. I want something more. You know what's funny? All right, I'm just going to keep it 100. My wife used to be shocked and amazed. Shocked and amazed. We would fight Friday night. Now, this is back in the day. So we don't really fight that much now. We, we'd have a fight maybe, you know, like maybe, maybe once a month or so. But not a fight, not a fight. And then, and then, and then, you know, that's it. So it's nothing really big. But my wife used to be shocked and amazed. We would fight all day Friday, all day Saturday. And I would get up the same, she'd be, mm, God ain't gonna bless me, and I would be annoyed. She'd be like, what? How did that happen? Wait a minute, wait. Let me go back and read my Bible. I saw sin <laughs> separated you, and no, no, because the anointing is an act of grace for other people according to God's purpose. Mm. Woo! God will use you and anoint you and send you to hell. Did I lose them? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> okay, let me take you to the word. Go to Luke 4 and 18. Because the scripture said, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we lay hands on the sick in your name? And God said, depart from me, for I never knew you. Oh, let me show you Luke 4 and 18 and 19 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, the anointing comes for the purpose of setting people free, making people whole, giving people strength. But if you only stop at being anointed and don't seek God's presence, personally, you will set other people free and you'll be in change yourself. How can I preach to others and myself become a castaway? Huh? But God wants you to want more. Somebody say more. Listen. I prophetically declare to you that the presence of God is going to come so strong across the United States. Hear me. The presence of God is going to come so tough that it's going to interrupt agendas. The presence of God is going to fill churches where the glory of God and healings are going to take place. Where sickness was allowed to stand up, the presence of God is going to move. One of the things, and please forgive my own mindset, but one of the things I find offensive one of the things I find offensive is when is when the lame or the deaf, we got deaf interpret, interpreters, instead of us praying and interceding that they will be healed. Yes, yes. We got people, like I'm believing God for healing of a brother in our church because I believe that the God we serve is the same then as he is today. And I refuse to compromise. I'm believing God to do something miraculous. Mm -hmm. I gotta figure it'll be quiet. Listen, David wanted more than just to be anointed. But I want God's presence. So you know what David did? The Samuel, the sixth chapter, David together gathered 30,000 men of Israel. He went down with Gibeah. I'm sorry, he went to Gibeah with Uzzah, Ahio, Abinadad, driving the cart. They put the ark on the cart and they began to drive it according to the word of God. When it hit Nathan's floor, I got you. The ark stumbled. And Uzzah put his hand on the ark to keep it from falling, and Uzzah died. Mm -hmm. David was dismayed. And David was like, you know what? 
we're going to put this part in open Edom's house because I'm too afraid to try again. I'm too afraid to try to bring the ark of God. So you know what he did? So David took the ark, put it in open Edom's house, all 30,000 people are left. And then all of a sudden, God started to bless Obed-Edom. For three months, everything Obed-Edom did, everything in Obed-Edom's house was blessed. Then somebody came to the king and said, King, do you know the ark? Obed-Edom is a multi-millionaire. He planted potatoes. He planted one potato and got a whole crowd. He got figs, lemons, his wife is pregnant again. He got 19 grandchildren coming. David! So David gets upset. He goes down to Obed Eden to get the ark, which brings me to my point. Sometimes God will provoke you into a blessing. and you really love them, you're going to break up at least 20 times in life, you know, during the dating process. So I told Laura, I was like, yo, I don't need to be with you to be a daddy. It's all right. I'm so extra tonight. I can be a daddy. I don't need to be a wife for you. I'm going to be a daddy. She's like, okay, okay. I just see her for a week. When I came to pick up little Sly, Laura came out of the house and looked like the wind caught her hair just right. The breeze was flowing, the sun grabbed her little sundress. I was like, good God Almighty. And for that moment, I was like, I miss being in your presence. Sometimes lost or sometimes God separating you from the things that you love. It's him building an urge to want it more. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all don't believe me so. Penina had a baby. And Hannah did not have a baby. And she wanted a baby. But God closed her womb. And every time she seen Penina, now she had baby, don't you cry. Mama's going to cook you grits and pies. So whatever that word is. Every time she seen it, she's like, I want it. Yeah. And it made her see God yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. And so God opened up her womb when she had a child. You still don't believe me? Hey, God's baby. Six pages ahead. And then he sacrificed. What's the same? 
safe distance during the social distance time. It is a prophetic utterance for God to tell me to tell you if you would sacrifice and glorify God in this season, yes. He would increase you for the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Now I wish I had time to work on this. So David, he starts dancing. And the Lord told me to tell you, I know you have failed. I know you have made mistakes. I know you feel like God doesn't want to be bothered with you. I know you feel like you're not worthy. But God told me to tell you to go back and try again. Go back and try again. Do not allow yourself to settle where you are. Try it again. Don't let your failure be the last thing you remember about this place in your life. Try again. Try again. Do you know what the greatest believers are? And I'm done. Do you know why the great believers are great? It's not because they're perfect. It's not because they don't make mistakes. We fall down. It's not that they got everything right. You know what makes them great? Their masters are getting back up again. <laughs> They've mastered getting back up again. I know what it feels like to sin and to repent. And to sin and to repent. And to sin and to repent. To cry and repent. And then sin. Then shout. Then cry. Then repent. And sin. Get slain in the spirit, cry, then shout, then sin, and then repent. <laughs> we just learned how to get back up again. Go get your life back. As we prepare for all time, do you know Michael Jordan? One of the greatest basketball players ever was cut for the freshman squad. He didn't even make the freshman basketball team, but he tried it again. Mayweather, do you know he did not win the Olympics? 51 and 0, 51 fights, 51 wins later. He just kept trying again. If you lost your house, go get another one. <laughs> if you lost your marriage, God is there. Love ain't over. Get out there and fix your hair up. Brush your teeth and put some good shoes on. Don't, don't come out of the house with some ashy feet and the flip-flops on looking like you're in like a, like. <laughs> put your good dress on it. Go out and, and try it again. No problem, try a different school. I was at University of Calabasas. Now I'm going to go over here to a lion university. I'm going to try again. Go get your life back. Can you type in your prayer request? Type in your prayer request. Now, let me challenge you. I want to. What are you going to go get back? That's what I want you to say. Type in. Type in. Let's put actions. Let's put hope to your faith. Lord, I, I, I want to be married again. Lord, I want my own home. Lord, I want a new child. Lord, I want a bank account that I can keep open. Lord, I want good credit. Lord, I, I, I want to have a new state of mind. Lord, I want a new business. Whatever it is, type it in. I'm waiting, man of God, I'm waiting. Father, in the name of Jesus, even now, Lord, we pray for the sick right now. Mama Kirsten, in the name of Jesus, Mama, be healed her body. You heal in the name of Jesus, Lord. The member's mother of COVID-19 at pneumonia with no signs. You can surely heal of cancer. Fix, Lord, fix it, renew our minds. 
give us hope, a new start, a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. I feel this in my spirit. Help me sing this song if you know it. Help me. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. platforms for your sewing. It's Change Church on Cash App. Uh, it should be on the bottom of the screen with Change Church on Cash App. For our text giving, it's 951-444-9292. For Easy Ties, it's Change Church, Corona, California. Lastly, we have Venmo, and it's Changed Hyphen Church. Amen. As we're preparing to give, I want everybody to get their seed in their hand. And if you can, we're going to stand to our feet. If you can, we're going to stand to our feet. Amen. As we prepare to give God his sacrifice. One of the things that God gave me, he was very specific, is he told me to prophesy those things that he showed me. And these were the things that he showed me about your lives, what was going to be happening in your lives. On the count of three, I'm going to speak this over your life, and we're going to get it. Here we go. One, two, three. Lord, I confess this is my best sacrifice I live to thee. Thank you for the opportunity to give to you first of what you have given to me. According to your word, I receive financial increase, blessings and favor, miracles and new ideas, concepts and opportunities, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, unexpected debt cancellation. My God, I feel that. Let me say that again. Unexpected debt cancellation. The seven miracles, Father, that will increase my resources a hundredfold. Lord, live and send prosperity now. According to Psalms 118 and 25, I denounce every negative confession over my finances and investments, properties I own and will own in Jesus' name. I declare money comes to me now to fulfill my destiny and aid me in my kingdom purpose. I am not broke. I have more than enough. I'm not living 
living in lack. I'm living in a surplus of abundance. My offerings empower my church to have more than enough. I seek by faith for global expansion that will result in worldwide mission and acts of kindness. Finally, as a tiger, the devourer is rebuked. My harvest is protected. In obedience to your word, I declare and decree that I now live in the overflow. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Have your hand in your heart, man. I love you. Go and try it again. Be relentless in your pursuit. I'll see you next week, champion. Peace be unto you and your house. Walk in victory. God bless.